Hello my friends, this is Dr. Diana's patient and I am pretty ill. I wanted to let you know that our study on vascular fundus changes observed in patients who may have CCSVI, chronic cerebrospinal venous insufficiency, including patients with multiple sclerosis and Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, is humming along well. We've had 25 special patients and we will run through 30 normals here soon. Then I'll be blinded as I look at the backs of the eyes, the fundus, magnify the pictures a ridiculous amount, and look for signs of poor venous drainage, CCSVI, and other irregularities, shall we say. I can hardly wait. And for those of you who haven't yet participated, if you can make it to Texas, there's still time. And we'll continue the study for a couple of months. You'll be glad you did it. Things are about to get very interesting, my friends. Now, meanwhile, one of the study participants who I love came through, and as most of you do, built me up and helped me. Thank you for that, A. Her significant other, Bruce Gunn, wrote a little something for the cause, and I'd like to share it with you today. The fine print here. Anyone wanting permission to use this writing, please send a note to Bruce Gunn, G U N N, at yahoo.com to submit a request. My YouTube friends, you can find more information on my website, prettyill.com. Bruce calls this Go Beyond Zebra. I love it. Um, Theodore E. Woodward was a renowned University of Maryland Baltimore researcher in the field of medicine. In 1948, he received a Nobel Prize nomination for his role in finding cures for typhus and typhoid fever, and most notably to people who suffer from rare diseases like Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, EDS. He is credited with the aphorism, when you hear hoof beats behind you, don't expect to see a zebra. Medical students are given this quote as a way to let them know that they should look for a common diagnosis for the symptoms they are given instead of the possibility of it being a rare case. This is why people with EDS refer to themselves as zebras. They are the unexpected. They are the monkey wrench in the works of medical diagnosis. There is a very famous doctor whose quote should be the new one that medical students are taught. It's a little more profound. It's more thought-provoking. It should serve as a more of a challenge to doctors. It tells them to not accept the standard assumptions as probability. It doesn't tell them to look for the rare or common cases. Instead, it inspires them to research everywhere for answers. To think outside the box, if zebras are the exception to the rule, then there must be an exception to the zebras as well. So I give you that quote by the very famous doctor, quote, there is no end to the thing you might know, depending how far beyond zebra you go, unquote. Indeed. What will you find if you refuse to stop looking? What would have happened if everyone had followed Mr. Woodward's belief? Would EDS victims be told it was all in their heads? Would um, Edward Ehlers and Henry Alexander Danlos have been told that they were wasting their time? I appreciate inquisitive researchers and doctors. I am grateful for the interests that spark their desires to find answers, but they can only do so much. We need to help by spreading the word and sharing information. The more we can do, the more they can do. Do what you can to help the medical profession to go beyond zebra. And the famous doctor with the quote? He wasn't in the medical field. He wasn't even a researcher. He was a writer and a cartoonist. Like the man with the hoofbeats quote, his name was also Theodore, without the E at the end. But you might know him better by his pen name, Dr. Seuss. Wow. So thank you to Bruce Gunn for that. I love that. How inspiring. We, we must lift, lift each other up and let's continue to do so. We will help each other. We will help the doctors. The doctors will help us. Okay. Till then, my friends, let's continue to change our world one brain cell at a time if we have to. Still hugs to you all.